we're back with more confidential stories behind the scenes of the Dangerverse. Buckle up as we dive on in. Crazy stunts, crazy villains, and life-changing moments for Henry, you are not gonna wanna miss it. Fact number 10. When we last left Henry, he saved Swellview, faked his own demise, and went on to be a part of a superhero team in dystopia. But then, when Ray was at his lowest point, Henry showed back up. This was certainly a big moment in Danger Force, but would it surprise you to know that Jace isn't really there? When did Schwaz build all this? That's right! Due to scheduling conflicts, Jace Norman had to film his initial appearance against a green screen and was composited in with special effects. Later, the cast was properly reunited for the episode, Return of the Kid. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda tight there, big dog. <laughs> Fact number nine. Speaking of green screens, sometimes falling on the floor is too painful, even for the stunt team. So the crew lays out green colored soft pads on the floor for the stunt team to fall onto. The floor is later placed back in with special effects. Wait, wait. Good effects too. I really fell for that. <laughs> Fact number eight. Following along with hiding things, did you know that an actor once had to hide his face for an entire episode? Why don't I show you? In the middle portion of Hour of Power, Captain Man spends his time with his head trapped in a box. That's because actor Cooper Barnes was offset due to the birth of his daughter. His stunt double filled in for all his on-camera appearances. I'm okay, wow, it's bright in here. But that trick wouldn't really work on me. They don't make boxes to hide disembodied voices. Believe me, I've looked into it. Fact number seven, speaking of dialogue, <laughs> speaking, get it? When writing speaking lines for the episodes, the writers tend to write a lot of overlapping conversations. This is what's known as dual dialogue. We have something that's called dual dialogue in which these guys right here, you guys improv, you ad lib, you write it into the script, and then we see Ray and Henry start to talk with each other. There was a nest of scorpions right in the sandbox. Yeah. Scorpions? Yeah. They're all cr crawling all over them, and oh, the yeah, kids are like, oh, freaking out. Oh, they're on my face! Oh, for the love of God! Get the scorpions out of me! It definitely takes good chemistry to pull off this kind of conversation. I remember like someone came on our show and they're like, oh yeah, we don't we don't have this like two people talking at the same time. I'm like, that's not something we do that every episode. <laughs> yeah. I guess just like the writer's way of like running out of ideas, like they're just like, just have them talk. It's absolutely the writer's way of running out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Fact number six. Drex is arguably the most reviled, evil, and personal villain in the Dangerverse. But in real life, actor Tommy Walker is really close friends with Jace Norman and Cooper Barnes. And they are so dedicated to their performances that sometimes the fight scenes get a little too real. There was nothing like that nothing finale quite where like them. we really got to go at it. At that point though, there were times where we were so passionate and so in it at that point yeah. that there were times where it was kind of getting away from us. But I tagged them a couple of tagged times. Tagged me a couple of times. In the ribs. They kicked them in the ribs pretty hard. And you know, we might have even used them because they were darn good. But, oh, absolutely. No, it, went in the, it was the one on TV. That is some stellar acting. You could swear these guys are mortal enemies. Fact number five, when it came time for Drex to fight the entire Danger Force, it was a uh, little more than actor Tommy Walker bargained for. I read it, I absorbed it, I understood it, but not till we did it one by one and you kind of went down the line of all four of the kids fighting me, it got very exciting. And, and what was even better was that they were really cognizant of that and like super into it and it made me feel great because I was honored to be the guy that they were like looking forward to going on. Oh yeah, I remember at the end of that day you were like, man, I didn't, uh, I was a little, I was feeling, I was feeling that yeah, one a little bit. That was a work day for sure. With Drex, the hits just keep on coming, literally. Fact number four. So just how did Drex end up in the man's nest prison? When we last saw him, he had fallen off the blimp. Uh, what happened between then and now? I think you forgot I'm indestructible. <clears throat> in the finale, they really took me to task. So it was the first time that that epic battle that I actually started to become less impervious to pain. They really ganged up and at that point being sent off the blimp, he was pretty incapacitated. And then uh, thanks to I believe it was Sean Ryan Fox's drone, they took mm -hmm. in unconscious at the moment, Drex <laughs> to prison and locked him up and bolted him up and at that point it's, you know, he can't get out. Indestructibility, a blessing and a curse. Who knew? 
fact number three. Speaking of the man's nest, there seems to be over a hundred new rooms within. This place is over 200 rooms. Oh, um, I mean over 200. Yeah, you got me. It's more like 500. Uh, 500. Yeah, you got me. It's more like 900. Okay, so there are a ton of new rooms. Prisons, armories, spas, a sushi room. And even a disco that's full-time DJed by Schwaz's clone. This music makes me want to dance. Oh, or even perform in a musical. And party! Fact number two, in the episode Mika's Musical, the Danger Force, with the surprising help of Frankini, stage a musical number. When you're in a pickle, it's awfully wide. To shake it up with some level cut. But, much like Henry Danger the Musical, the vocals need to be captured in a separate recording session. Hey Frankini, not a fan, yeah. so Kid Danger and Captain Man. Yeah, I can relate. I'm always coming to you live from a separate recording session. Fact number one. While singing, the cast actually has tiny earpieces blasting the music tracks to guide their rhythms and pitch. I have an earwig right here, which is basically a little thing <laughs> that you kind of put into your ear, and it kind of like plays the music as we're singing out here so that we could hear it and sing along with it and so that they could get all the other audio right and then we could also still sing with it in our ears. So if their lovely singing voices are captured at another time and the music is only playing in their ears, then what does it sound like on set while filming? Cause we are brilliant as they Oh my, uh, much, much different than expected. Let's get that full mix back in. Burger, burger party. We're gonna party. Burger, burger party. That's more like it. And hey, the tape maintained itself this time. It must be those sick beats. Thanks for sticking around. That's all I have for now. And for more fun videos and deep dives, be sure to subscribe to the Henry Danger channel here on YouTube. We'll catch you next time, only on Nick.